some of the same things that we reacted to with Christianity, you know, it's all or nothing, black and white thinking. Well, we get to the Course and it's like, it is all or nothing thinking. Not in terms of behaviors, you know, that somehow it's a sin if you don't wear a hat to church or some of these crazy beliefs and everything, but in terms of thought systems, you know, this is completely uncompromising. So when I traveled around, sometimes people would say, uh, Gary told me that what I was teaching was not the Course, or he told me that, that this isn't really the teachings of, of forgiveness or something, and they would have reactions, and, and in one sense, it's, there has to be different people to play different parts and roles and so forth, and in one sense, you could say that's just calling a spade a spade. A Course in Miracles is a beautiful teaching, but like everything in form, it is open to interpretation by the ego. And the ego will interpret the Course uh, in many different ways, uh, to its own liking. Um, ascended Masters are not really interested in multiple interpretations. Uh, it's just, boom, here it is. Like it or not, here it is. And so when you get into interpretations, you know, there's always going to be conflicts, disagreements, and so on and so forth. And the good thing about the state of peace, or ascendance, or transcendence, is, is that it doesn't, it doesn't buy into any of those conflicts. It sees that there, there really is not two to conflict. There isn't that duality that has to conflict, which is beautiful. That's the blessing of, of enlightenment, that's the blessing of the present moment. Ascension, I'll call it, does, does not have an opinion. So, you know, if you have an ascended master and you say, what's your opinion about this or about that, you're not going to get an opinion. Uh, ascension does not give opinions. And I can tell you from experience that this is really a glorious state of mind because it is a very, very glorious state of mind not to have any opinions about anything. Not about people, not about fashions, about countries, politics, the environment, not about exercise. No opinions about nutrition. Zip, 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 zip. It's, it's really very joyful. Uh, opinions drain the mind. Drain the mind. It, the mind is actually a state of vitality. It's just got spectacular energy and radiance and joy and, and opinions just put a damper try to, in awareness, not in reality, to bring the mind down into a state of sleep, sluggishness, deception, and it's no fun. Above all, uh, opinions are no fun. And so, one thing I could say would be that, that it is impossible to live a, a life and live in a state of mind that has no opinions without the Holy Spirit in Jesus. Uh, or whatever name you choose to call Spirit. Yeah, if you choose to use other names that aren't Christian. Oneness. This Spirit is essential and trust in this Spirit is absolutely essential to that state of mind. Uh, it, would, it would just be a pretense to kind of make a statement like, okay, I will no longer have an opinion if you didn't have a very trusting relationship with Spirit. Because you would just be fooling yourself. You know, you could try to just put a clamp on your mouth or uh, try to put on a happy face, but without that connection with Spirit, it would just be empty. It would just be another pretense. And we don't want those pretenses. So that's why we have this great opportunity here to really go deeply into this belief system called ego, to go very deep and to expose it. 
and to reach that state that is beyond the opinions. Uh, I find that in my journey, in my life, questions were, were very helpful. They were always encouraged, and not so much questions about like the gossip of the world, who did what to what, and, and what's the latest on this, and what's the breaking news, not those kind of questions, but questions about the mind, about consciousness, about perception, about beliefs, about the thought system. Those are all helpful questions because they tend to unravel the ego. And the ego, if there's anything that should be questioned, it is the ego. The ego is, is not something to just assume is real and true and just kind of leave it alone. Uh, you do have to question what you believe in to be free of it. So, to me, those are very helpful questions. I have seen teachers of the Course over the years that will, that will not even respond to questions of the world. Uh, that will say, that's not a real question, move on to the next one. And uh, in one sense, we want to encourage the spirit of asking those real questions, but again, we're not putting any kind of limits or parameters. So, you can still feel free to ask any question, whether it's about something in physicality, or something in the mind, something about consciousness, just feel free and open to ask anything. Another thing about this is, uh, how far do you take this stuff? And you take it all the way. Yes. Anyone who isn't really interested in taking it all the way to enlightenment, uh, will soon tire of me, uh, because uh, they usually don't hang around, and they don't show up, and that's fine too. Uh, my lesson always was, take it all the way, and in taking it all the way, you will see that nothing can be judged. Uh, there aren't judgments about people who, people who are taking it all the way, or who aren't. There aren't judgments about you know, who's getting it and who's not getting it. In the state of forgiveness, everything is equally acceptable. And there isn't this sense of time delay. And there isn't this sense of uh, before, during, and after. It's a unification experience. It's a state of mind where everything is completely unified. And in that unification, there's really nothing to question or nothing to confront. And it's really been good. Uh, over the years, I've just watched a lot of things that have gone on in this world, and a lot of things that have gone on with the Course. And I never felt it was, there was anything to confront in form. There was never a person to confront. Um, also, I remember reading it in the teacher's manual that to an advanced teacher of God, there is no challenge. And I thought, well, that's cool. No challenge. Hmm. Not that the experiences you go through don't seem challenging. They certainly can seem very challenging to the ego. But it's that, that you really don't have to go challenge anybody. You don't have to challenge anybody on their beliefs. There's no one to convince. Um, that's the best part I find of traveling around this world and going to these 26 countries is I had an experience where I could feel the contentment and the peace and the joy in my heart and I knew that I, there was nobody to convince. And you really, you have this feeling of being relieved or off the hook when you have this feeling. That way you can talk to anybody. You don't really care whether they profess to believe in something or not. Whether they profess to believe in God or not. Suddenly, this old thing about whether somebody is a believer or a non-believer, who cares? I mean, who really cares uh, if somebody is a believer or a non-believer? When you're in the joy yourself, everyone is in that experience with you. You feel totally connected. Like in quantum physics, you feel like you're part of a unified field. You feel that everything and everyone is, is, is you. It's literally, not figuratively or sentimentally, but it's just all of you.